Good evening, everybody. I bring this meeting for uh, January the 18th, 2022 to order. Result of the agenda for the January 18th, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the January 4th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We were supposed to have a delegation, but uh, she is not with us yet, so we'll skip over this. And if she comes in, I think by Zoom you said, maybe a little bit later. If not, then we'll have to maybe have it on our next meeting. Six communications. Result the letter from the Swan Lake Watershed District dated January 7th, 2022, be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? there from our representatives to just a recap of the work they did the, the one job in town was over by uh, uh, down by the, the Kinchcliffe's area and Jack Dick's house that was the only job done in town this year okay. I believe okay. all in favor opposed it's carried seven seven point one Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor uh, Morio. Um, I can't see. Is Mr. Harvey still there? He's here, yes. I am, yeah. Okay. Uh, in the engineering and the transportation since working on the loader RFQ, uh, is that the one that we just approved, like the mini tractor, or is this the, the big loader? This is the wheel loader, the big loader. So that's going to be in the budget for this year, but we're just uh, getting it set up. Okay, so how often do we replace that? We just did it not five, that long ago. Every five years, because that's one of the core units that uh, okay. every Yeah, day. that's why it's been that long, I thought it was less than that, but time flies. Yeah. Councillor White and Councillor Delorier. Uh, just a comment uh, relative to the Public Works team, and I'm, I'm sure uh, Mr. Harvey will share it. I was surprised recently that uh, there was a shortage of staff on the garbage picking truck, and our uh, manager of Public Works, uh, Mr. Uh, Jordan Brooks, uh, was uh, stepped in to help out, and obviously being a director, one might have thought he driving the truck and let the staff pick up the garbage, but no, in fact, we got the back of that garbage truck and we picked up garbage and up on the regular drive the truck. That's exemplary service. That's going to be on the call. And uh, I'm sure we all appreciate that so much. So uh, Mr. Poole, hopefully uh, give him a hug from our team. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor White. Councilor Delorier. Um, I guess I noted, noted in here it says working on the budget. Uh, so. With regards to that, have the letters been sent out for uh, the service for uh, garbage pickup? Because I know those, those they're usually sent out in the fall time in order to do the the, by, the bylaw. We need those back. Have they been sent out already? Uh, that's changed because we used to do it where they were part of the special oh, service yeah. bylaw, but now they're invoiced. Okay. Uh, so, it was so the special service by bylaw isn't held up by that anymore then. Okay. okay. Further discussion. All in favor. Opposed, it's carried. 7.2, result of the protective service report for December 2021 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, just one quick question on very first one in Swan River, Third Street North, NBI. Um, normally, those get invoiced to NBIC, and I see that one is not. Is there a reason why? 
Yeah, that one involved uh, two town residents, and it wasn't on the highway. Okay. So we can't invoice for it through MPI. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3, result of the Fox Warner Fire Department report for 2021 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 7.4 result of the December 2021 Swan River Handy, Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Mr. Are we having a trouble with staff? Not, not with the handy van, no. Uh, just kidding. We have a bylaw staffing issues, but not handy van. Okay. We have two part-time drivers that are ready to go. Okay. Ready to go. Yeah, and I see it's making trips to, on the highway. I've seen it yesterday, so it's, it's, it's out there. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.5 Council and CAO reports. I'll start with Councillor Friesen. Um, I need to defer to uh, the CAO. Did you ever have that meeting with Mary Mitchell? Yes. With Manitoba Age Friendly? We were supposed to have a Zoom meeting and I wasn't able to do it, so and I haven't talked to Derek since, so maybe we can. Yeah, there's a meeting this Friday where, where the city of Thompson and the town of Swanager and our uh, age friendly representative from the province basically are going to discuss what's going to happen in 2022. Uh, <coughs> no, it's fine. It, it, it's basically an, an initiative that we've signed up for a pilot project. Uh, it does meet our strat plan goals, so the town of Swanover did sign up. We're one of eight communities in the province that are uh, uh, just part of a project of how we're going to make changes for the age-friendly initiative, and the province is going to track our progress and uh, advertise, and I'm sure there'll be grant repercussions because of it and, and everything else, but we did sign up. Good. Can only, that could only be a good thing. Yeah. And you said how many communities in the province? Uh, eight. eight. So there's, there's uh, four teams, and we were teamed up for the city of Thompson. Nice. Good. Uh, Councillor White had a question, I guess, on that. Hey, Mr. Poole, you said you're having an age friendly meeting with Thompson and others this Friday? This Friday, yep. Yeah. You're, uh, you're welcome uh, to come. I would hope to. Uh, I think that's one of my new job descriptions or an existing continuing one that you would invite council to be part of that. Absolutely. I'll send Thank you, you uh, an email invite. And Thank you. you. Me too, Derek. Okay. Um, communities of Care, uh, we had a meeting yesterday and pretty much talked about the toys for you. Um, they made up certificates for all the people that participated. So I walked around town today handing out the certificates. I gave one to our CAO, he has it. And we have one for the fire chief and a whole bunch of other people that were. It was a very uh, successful campaign. It's a lot of work. And hats off to Beth Owen because she uh, stepped in as coordinator and looked after it. And other than that, um, I have none of the notes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Thank you, Your Worship. I don't have a lot to report on. I, unfortunately, I was away for a few meetings here. Uh, I do want to send 
a thank you to the Swan River Fire Department, uh, Chief Fedorchuk and your team on behalf of uh, uh, the Swan Valley Co-op and uh, the residents of the community as well. Thank you for your efforts in the uh, blaze that we did have at the Co-op Agro site and uh, the feedback that I received from my team was that your service and uh, team was exemplary. So again, thank you for that and very much appreciated. I think your worship, that's all I have on my list. Oh, I do have one item though for in camera. Okay, uh, and, and that concerns? A personnel issue. Okay, so we can add that personnel. Thank you, that's all I have. Okay, uh, Councilor uh, DeLaurier. Uh, last Monday the 10th, I had a planning district meeting. Um, uh, it's slow time of year for the planning district. There isn't much building going on, so not many permits coming out yet. Uh, the 11th had the cow meeting, which you all attend. 12th, we had the uh, watershed district uh, board met to discuss how we're going to conduct uh, COVID-friendly elections because our, our actual the the entire board is quite large, so we're, we're going to do it over uh, telephone elections again, like similar to last year. Um, and uh, other than that, that's uh, that's all I have. Councillor Bobbitt. Uh, same thing was at the same meeting. Uh, Councillor Glory, uh, elections are coming up. Uh, just to speak a bit about that, um, we both have been appointed to that. And so hopefully we get a seat. Uh, another thing. I'm good. Okay. Well, I've got pardon me, I'm just that I've arranged a meeting and hopefully CA O'Cool and Mr. Harvey can be there at 10 30 Friday morning to speak with the representatives of the transportation uh, since that will be one of my new handles. Duties? Yeah, we will be just to get the bring me up to speed that's scheduled for 10 30 Friday morning. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh Councillor White. A couple of meetings. Uh, the, we had a protective service committee meeting at lunch hour on the 10th, and as usual, uh, crime uh, that raises up the head is uh, regular. So we looked at the issues again, as we many times and the solutions. And uh, I can advise our listening public or viewing public that we've been in communication with Winnipeg, uh, Dauphin, and our local RCMP and the Citizens on Patrol. Uh, one of the things that appears to be coming in the near future is the open house, which they're working on. For the public to be invited to come in and uh, offer suggestions and areas that we can improve on and, and hopefully uh, conference as well. Then on uh, January 11th, we've got our cow meeting and uh, COVID and how we as a community and as a council are managing that. The meeting crime, and we talked about the same thing as this above. But I think significantly at the cow meeting, the mayor uh, asked us to consider new committees, which we've all, I believe, accepted. And one of the jobs that you uh, asked me, sir, and, and the team will agree on is economic development. And what I'll be doing in the very near future, I'll be meeting with Deputy Mayor Tony and talking about how I can get, uh, we can get rise involved a little more with our town, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. I've talked to some local business people already, had some wonderful ideas. And uh, nothing that has, we won't reinvent the wheel, but I, I would like to involve more local people in giving us direction. Also, you put uh, the committee was uh, re raising I ended up on settlement services, which I'm excited about. I read the article that was uh, given to us, which is on our agenda today, and all the wonderful things they are doing. Uh, the Airport Commission is still, I'm looking forward to working with Deputy Mayor or Mr. Mitchell to give us advice because I'm, I get lost in there now and then. And age friendly, and I'm looking forward to working with uh, Councillor Friesen. So, when all of that comes to mind, then Mr. Poole. I'm assuming, sir, that you'll be advising the representative uh, organizations of the new council reps they should touch base with. Hopefully it'll work both ways. We'll let them know that uh, who's in charge of what committee or taking part in what committee and how can we work together collaboratively. So that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council White. Uh, council Morio. Uh, nothing too dramatic for myself. Just the our last week's uh, of the whole meeting and the meeting 
planning meeting that we had with uh, invited council members to strategize and uh, look how we can move things forward with our discussion with the RCMP and uh, our contract with them and some priorities that we would like them to focus on. Um, rather than that, nothing uh, too dramatic. Okay, thank you. Uh, for me, uh, last night we had a Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation meeting. Out of that, there's some discussion on doctor recruitment, and nurse recruitment, and so forth, and some of the challenges that are moving forward on that. And, and uh, we'll be meeting with some of the nurse uh, uh, students uh, here on Thursday to further discuss some of the challenges, uh, but some, some major shortages. Uh, in our hospital with aides to uh, nurses, BNs, RNs, and so on, but that's pretty serious stuff. Um, there is a, a discussion that we had last night that uh, we'll be discussing in camera to do with the uh, the levies with uh, doctor recruit or medical recruitment <coughs> and so forth, but we'll discuss that in camera. Um, I guess uh, I guess it was mentioned by Councillor White that we did have a discussion uh, about crime and, and how we can have some kind of a forum to invite the community to uh, have an dis open discussion about that. So that is something that definitely we're, we're working on and, uh, and we'll be talking in, in the coming days with or weeks with uh, uh, Staff Sergeant uh, uh, Duncan there on, uh, on how we can conduct this meeting in, a, in, a, in an open way that we can have a really good dis community dis discussion. And uh, I guess lastly, I guess uh, today the government of Manitoba uh, shuffled the, the cabinet, so we have some, some returning cabinet ministers and some new ones, and uh, uh, we do have uh, Minister Clark again back with uh, Municipal Affairs, and I have uh, reached out to the minister already to have a meeting uh, with her at some point in time, and also with the Minister of Health, uh, Ms. Gordon, on uh, discussion on the uh, the CT scanner as well, so that's kind of an ongoing thing. But uh, right away, I uh, reached out to those two ministers to get a, a meeting uh, soon. We hope. So, other than that, uh, that's it for me. So, uh, so moving on, I guess we have uh, CAO and we have your report there. So I guess if there's anything there you want to open up or have a discussion or. Uh, yeah. <coughs> We also took a look at, or watching closely that uh, cabinet shakeup, as we we have been asking uh, Minister Gordon for a meeting for quite some time now. So hopefully we get that sooner than later. Uh, just so Council knows, I've been in uh, talks with the the Star and Times, and I'm going to be, I guess, commandeering the the town page <coughs> space uh, from time to time uh, to use as a platform for our town on notice uh, layout build. It, it basically, we will use the, the town page, but we'll also be using the website, Facebook, uh, and other social media platforms to have, to, just to increase our communication with our residents from the government to our residents and businesses. It, it, I believe that, that is some, that's an area that we can improve on. And uh, I think town on notice is gonna do that once we see that that headline will know that we have something to say so there is a self-explanatory notice going out uh, uh, in the paper of what exactly town on notice is and then the first one will, will likely deal with crime but i'd like to have a few of those uh, meetings that you scheduled with the province first uh, and maybe maybe uh, that's a good platform to advertise our our town hall meeting as well yeah i think so um, and as you'll see in the report, working on budget, and uh, council will have a presentation uh, Johnson Controls regarding the arena project the next council meeting, so prepare for that. Uh, the strat plan, I know it's uh, an election year, but we're still going to roll that out to let the public know of our priorities. And uh, other than that, the EV charging station grant did go to the Building Sustainable Communities Fund. And uh, once everything opens up, the zero emissions vehicle uh, uh, infrastructure. infrastructure fund will be applied to as well. And just waiting for the draft agreement from the, the union. That's the draft. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And I did add at the end of my report, just sort of a, I know some of you recognize the list, but back uh, in 2020, we did have a to-do list. Uh, I did put that in there and just show council what has been completed and what is ongoing. So sometimes it does seem like we're spinning our tires, but we have a fair bit of uh, items across the uh, Councilor White and the Council Morio. Firstly, thank you, uh, Mr. Poole. Good stuff. I guess a question, uh, maybe it was in it, I missed I did read it. What's happening with the SBL and the water going out to their plant? Uh, right now, it's it's in We're their waiting hands. For the price from them. Yeah, you know We're waiting for the price from them. I don't think he heard you. Pardon? We're waiting for, for a cost estimate from them, and then that was going to be discussed with the agreement. So we're just waiting for that from them. Did you catch that? So, is, so it's in SPL's hands right now, is that what you're saying? Yes. That's correct. They're consultants' okay. hands. Councilor Moore. That's an important one. be my recommendation to drop that I just uh, as good as they are for the individual businesses I do believe that that the cameras and intersections would have to be first off they would be extremely expensive and, and they would have to be monitored constantly which we do not have the resources for and uh, you know after you know we've researched this in the past quite extensively and you can get a good swath where you can <coughs> zoom in 300, 300 feet, 400 feet, but only for that 30 degree window. If it's outside that, you're, you know, you're, you're pretty much hooped. And uh, we've seen what happens if you don't get a, a clear image of somebody or something or any identifying factor. Is it, is it worth, that's the question that's really brought up, is, it, is the expense and use of resources worth the the, uh, the gains in the end. So it, obviously it's not a council decision. It needs to be discussed. Uh, I think we can bring in some experts that can, that can tell us what this is actually going to cost if we really want a full slot of an, the entire Main Street. I think it's bigger than what anybody has brought to us in the past. Uh, much bigger. But if we're only looking at 30 degree sections where we're controlling where we can zoom in at a time, that will definitely bring down the costs. Somebody's going to have to monitor that and where it's going to be pointed. And if it's outside that area. Uh, okay. No, no, that's fine. I, like, I totally agree. Um, we have much more of an area to cover than just Main Street. Uh, so um, I just want to know where that decision came from. Thanks. Uh, a couple of questions. 2B, uh, meeting dates there. Have you heard anything back from them as far as? Yes, the CAO did contact us uh, late last week that she would get meeting dates to us this week. We haven't okay. heard anything. Okay. Well, whatever they are, let's accept them and let's move with this. Even if, even if they're next, um, in two days from now, let's, let's yeah. go with them. Um, my next question was in your uh, budget heading there, February 8th, you're planning on having the public presentation for the budget February 8th? Not, I guess it, it's the presentation that council will see that will ultimately end up going to the public. It's the first presentation that council will see, but that presentation okay. will end up going okay, to the Okay, so public. this isn't the public hearing where people come? No. This, cause I'm, no, 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 council, yeah, needs, we to, council needs to see it. That's okay. The, First formal presentation. Okay. Okay. That's it for me. Councilor White. Uh, getting back to the uh, the cameras on Main Street, those sort of cameras, I really encourage council to reconsider 
making, I don't know, we haven't made a decision. I'd like to have to get back into a call meeting where we can be more candid. I think Mr. Poole will have more answers because he alluded to doing his research still, which he always does so well. But I'm not ready to give up on that one. Yet. Okay, then we'll do that. Thank okay, you. anything further? Nope. Councilor Friesen? I just was going to say, working in a store, we have, we, uh, they used to, a video, and those cameras, they're good cameras, but you still don't know who people are. They're coming in wearing masks and hoods. Couldn't be anybody. So uh, I really don't know what kind of cameras you would get to be, uh, be any better than what can you? I think Councillor White's correct. It definitely needs to be discussed. It doesn't mean that it's going to be off the list. Right. It just needs to be discussed because there's some tough questions that go along with that. It is no way on there to deter individual businesses from taking care of their prop property. In fact, we promote that. We want them to put the bars up, camera their own properties. That's ideal. Government owning, owning it and operating it. I may have an issue with that, but that's for another uh, conversation. Okay. <clears throat> okay, well then we'll uh, save that for uh, one of our call meetings then. Moving on, 8.1. Eight Resolve that Nikki Ballard be appointed as a citizen representative to the Northwest Regional Library Board effective January the 19th, 2022. Moved by Councillor DeMaurier, seconded by Councillor White. Go ahead. I spoke with Ballard. She's agreed to uh, <coughs> sit on the library board as a representative, so I just want to uh, preemptively thank her, I guess, and uh, welcome her aboard. Okay. Should, should this be accepted, I guess. Right. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, be sure to uh, thank Ms. Ballard for uh, serving on the, uh, the, the board from the council. Will do. 8.2, resolve the Town of Swan River enter an agreement with Ron Lewicki to provide building inspection services for the town as per Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eight point four resolved proposed provisions to the agreement to establish the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission be approved as per attached schedule A. Moved by uh, sorry, eight point three was completed. Oh I'm sorry, I, I completely missed that one. How did I do that? Thanks. Let's go back to eight point three. Whereas the Northwest Regional Immigrant Service Incorporated is a service provided to newcomers to increase positive outcomes in terms of settlement in the Swan River Valley, and the Town of Swan River appreciates the work provided by the service and realizes it is a key factor in the growth of our community. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan River accept the 2021 annual report submitted by the Northwest Regional Immigrant Services Incorporated be it further resolved, the Town of Swan River approved a 2022 operating grant in the amount of $4,000 to the Northwest Regional Immigrant Services Incorporated. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, where in the letter does it say with the amount that they're asking? Oh, everybody just okay. okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. This this group is 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 more than what a person uh, sees. And if you ever have a chance to pop in and and, and visit this office, they they do a lot of work there, and and it's very important work for obviously the newcomers that come to uh, to this community. And uh, I know that somebody. Uh, those individuals that have come to this community uh, that you know taken advantage of some of the services that they offer are very grateful that we have this uh, in our town so kudos to uh, 
uh, Jillian that heads it all, all up there and, and the, uh, the other employees that work in the office as well as other board members, not only, uh, they're not only municipal elected uh, board members, but are, they're also individuals from the community from the whole Swan River Valley. So we definitely uh, appreciate their work. Okay, 8.4, result of the proposed revisions to the agreement to establish the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission be approved as per Schedule A, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Bobick, and then Councillor Morio. So the changes are more or less just, just wording. No, voting as well. Yeah, so we're going Fifty percent per capita, fifty percent on assessment. I believe it came up to six thousand. Yeah, six thousand. Yeah, just roughly six thousand more. Yeah. So this ended up with the same funding, but just a different formula. Yeah, around six thousand more compared to what was in our last year. So our partners are paying six thousand less. That's based on uh, moving from 100% assessment to 50% assessment, 50% per capita. Council Morio. Uh, further on that track, as uh, Council Bobbick is realizing, um, I'm not too thrilled about that as an attempt by one specific municipality um, that appears to be trying to shift the cost of services uh, away from assessment to a more population base, um, which results more into the, the town having to pay for the cost of the projects or uh, organizations the front being shifted to the town. Um, yet, it seems like the majority of the user has a current, comes from the municipal uh, entity so I'm not too thrilled about it, but uh, after bringing the uh, process for debate to the right forum uh, versus where it was originally, um, I gotta respect that. But the uh, question that I have uh, to uh, Mr. Poole is, did we uh, ever get an answer to that question as to what happens, um, I guess say, for example, if we defeat this tonight, uh, what happens? Does it refer to the old agreement? Do the other three partners pass it, or what happens in that event? I, I would assume that we just don't have an agreement, <clears throat> and there's no municipality right now that is saying we should get rid of the airport, so they would pay, they would most likely pay to the contribution levels that they mostly agree with would be what I would assume would happen, but uh, we need to get to an agreement. I I wouldn't like that to happen. I would I would be putting this on the next G4 to 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 discuss if, if the councils cannot decide on their own to move with this. It needs to be discussed amongst all the contributing members. Councilor Delorier. If this, if, you know, in my mind, if this agreement is not uh, agreed upon by all, all four parties, then the agreement, then you have no agreement. The agreement doesn't exist unless it's agreed to by all, all the parties that are part of the agreement. So the last, the last thing we agreed on was the, is the agreement that's, that stands. Uh, that exactly. would, there's no end date on the last no, agreement. And no, so nobody has, like, nobody has proposed to end the, the agreement that's still in existence. I mean, we, we are hoping there's there's some that are hoping to have a new agreement that would replace that, but until you have one, that's the agreement that stands. Yeah, that's how I see it. Um, Councillor, uh, sorry, Mr. Benita. I was told that all four municipalities agreed to every change in the attached uh, agreement at the last G4 meeting. Uh, no, Absolutely that's not, not true at all. Well, then I guess I was misinformed. That's what I was told. Mr. Poole? Yeah, 
That's you're you're correct, Councillor uh, Delorier. But the the fact is, is we we've, we've seen it in the past where they they just contribute, I guess, what they want or what they see acceptable. So that that's what I was you know what I was stating is what I would guess is going to happen. They're not going to say, well, we don't have an agreement. We might as well just pay what the last agreement is. I would not expect them to do that. I would expect them to contribute the lesser. In my mind, it would have to be unanimous. You know, that's my thoughts. If there's any changes to the agreement, that's the problem with the G4 is that it doesn't have any uh, clout as far as voting goes. So when we when we want to make changes, we discuss it, and then there's assumptions of what what the discussion is all about, and then we go back to our individual councils and have these conversations, and then there's still more questions afterwards. So in my mind, how do you even come into an agreement with something like that? But anyway, that's besides the point, I guess. But further discussion on that, Councilor Delorier. I guess you know I've heard the arguments, and and some of our biggest commercial users that of the airport right now are are spray planes that are servicing the rural areas that are serving farmland. So you know, there's that lessens the argument towards shifting into this model in my mind that it, I, I won't be voting in favor of this. Uh, CFO Ganita and then Councillor White. I guess my lesson is don't go by what someone tells me, wait for written communication. I was told that, the, that, that all four municipalities agreed at the last two, G4 meeting to every change and to send it to all the CAOs so the councils could pass it. Obviously, I was told wrong. Councillor White. Uh, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Gadea, but it depends who the written correspondence is from, whether you accept that or not, sir. I'm not going to be voting for this either. I'm not going to be able to changing the model. Okay, further discussion? Councillor Bobbitt. So, am I under the impression this was all discussed in day four? Yes. So you're basing this decision that was made, supposedly made in G4? It was uh, asked or requested for this model at the G4. Like you said, there is no voting. So has the airport commission met with all its entities and is this subject to come up? Uh, yes, they have met, I believe. Uh, Deputy Mayor Montoni. So, <clears throat> pardon me, just a little bit of background, Councillor Bobbick. Uh, the agreement was uh, drafted by the airport commission based on the commission's uh, members who are based on representatives from every municipality. The draft agreement was drawn up. It was sent over to G4 for discussion. Um, and I do believe at G4 that uh, all the municipalities were in agree agreement except ours, who the other, other municipalities were all in agreement at 50%, pardon me, per, uh, per capita and then 50% assessment. Um, and then it was, there were a couple minor changes that were edited and changed and it went, that's why it's now back at councils to approve that. And it, there was the question at the, I don't know if it was our table or at G4, wondering the procedure, exactly what Councillor Delorier asked if if we all need to agree upon it, or if it's a majority majority approval on it, and I don't know if we got received a clear answer, but I think we're under the assumption, from what I hear, we're under the assumption if one municipality doesn't agree, it falls back onto uh, the old, or the existing signed agreement. Um, so I guess in terms of our council not passing this or defeating it. I'm not sure what that looks like in the future for uh, an updated agreement. So I, I guess that's for the council, for this table to decide whether or not the direction to the airport commission to 
either adopt changes or to not do anything with it at all. Uh, Councilor Deloria and then Councilor Morio. Well, I, I guess <coughs> I liken it to if, if to, for there to, the, you know, by definition be an agreement, all the parties have to uh, agree to it. If, if, if I say that last, our Mayor Jacobson, uh, we're going to agree that you're going to give me your truck, but he doesn't agree to it, I don't get his truck. You have to, all the parties have to agree to it. So unless this is passed by this council, the mayor can't fix his signature to it. We're not party to that agreement. We're party to the agreement that has the mayor's signature on it. So and that's the one that's in, in existence. So that, that that's my view on agreements. Councilor Morio. Um, and yeah, we're absolutely correct. That further to that, um, at our D four meeting, like uh, there was, as Council Baldick states, that there was some other grammatical and membership changes. I have no issues with those, but it was uh, agreed at. G4 that uh, since there was a deadlock at that meeting that it agreed and as it's presented would be sent to councils to pass or uh, defeat as is without amendment and go from there. Yes, um, that's true. That was, so it was uh, so that it doesn't go back and back and forth with four different amended agreements. It was they come back to each council and either pass or defeat. But uh, further to that, uh, another one of the major uh, users of the airport is the province of Manitoba, the water bombers, which strictly protects rural assets, but not the town. So um, I'm having a hard time fighting that new funding for the Okay, for the discussion. All right. All in favor? Opposed? Defeated. 8.5. Result of the town of Swarnham approved the 2022 standing committee and other appointment list. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Bovic. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Down to 10.1. <clears throat> Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28480 to number 28518, totaling 135,270 and 83 cents as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5017-5023, totaling $86,299 and 49 cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $1,026.83 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11. 11.1. 11 Resolve the bylaw 1 2022 being a bylaw to establish the organizational structure for the municipality be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, I see there's only basically one change there. Uh, what prompted that change? <coughs> the, the deputy mayor? Yeah, the deputy mayor from changing it from council must by resolution to the mayor must appoint. Uh, I believe I believe it was done on votes. There is there is a discussion at the last cow meeting that uh, that we weren't going to do that on votes anymore. So I basically have the mayor appointed as changes all of that. We discussed that, but we actually didn't. Oh, 
the sign. <laughs> that. That's my fault. I I yeah. made that change. Was that a last cow meeting? Uh, no, that was a discussion at a, at another meeting. That wasn't at a cow meeting. It was supposed to go to a cow meeting. Did we not discuss the organization? No. Okay. No. Not, not, my, that's my fault. I put in that edit uh, due to a meeting I had with the mayor, obviously. I suggest that we table this uh, resolution. Okay. Uh, second to table. Okay. Uh, Councilor Bobbitt. All in favor of tabling? Okay, so it's tabled. I think it should just go back to the cow meeting first. Sure. Okay. Okay, 11.2. Resolve the bylaw 2 2022 being a bylaw to repeal 10 2018 being read a first time moved by council morio seconded by councilor white discussion all in favor opposed it's carried Result of pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act. Council go to the committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have a legal item, uh, purchase services, and I believe uh, personnel. Moved by Council White, seconded by Council Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're in camera. Resolve this regular meeting of council now adjourn at 9.15 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.